everyone and welcome to how to become a millionaire on Rival Stars. These tactics will work no matter if you've just started your game or are quite a few hours in, like me. Some people asked how I got my 100 million and if it was a cheat and my answer is... But also no because we don't stand hacks or cheats here. Side note, I have never actually played mobile so I have no idea if these work on that edition. One thing I do know however is that unlike mobile you can't purchase gold on desktop so it is really down to how you play and spend your money. So let's get into the first tip. Number 1. Bet on yourself. This is the easiest way to double or at least make a decent amount extra each time you race. If you aren't a seasoned jockey and either don't know the track well or haven't quite mastered your race style, definitely go for top 2 or top 3, even if it gets you less money than for betting first. If you are sure you will win, then go ahead and bet the full amount. However, if you aren't sure, don't bother betting half or less, since if you do lose, you will also lose all of that money. Bets are multiplied by your odds, so the lower your odds, the higher your chance of winning, but you will get slightly less extra money. Instead, only bet on yourself if you are ranked first, and with a notable difference in odds between you and second. Even if you have as little as 3.0 odd, you will still get 3 times as much as you bet, and eventually the profit will add up. Number 2. Upgrade the homestead. If you spend a lot of time on the game, or even pop on every couple of hours, you will really benefit from the homestead income. When you have it fully upgraded, you get 550k for 10 payments. That's half a million just for waiting. And of course, you can do things in the meantime, like more races or training. Just don't forget to collect frequently, because if there are 10 payments waiting, you won't get any more unless you collect. So, I recommend collecting before you log off and as soon as you log in again. And yes, the payments will still come in even if the game is closed. Payments come in every 5 minutes on the dot, so it will only take 50 minutes for your homestead to have max payments. And I have to admit, 660k an hour is not a bad rate at all. Even if your homestead isn't fully upgraded, you will still get a significant bonus every hour, and every little helps. Number 3. Leave customization to later. One thing I really like about this game is the customization options for the tack. They really allow your champion to have a unique look and you can take some cool photos as well. However, you will find that the tack comes at quite a price, especially the higher level stuff, which can be upwards of a million. Since tack makes absolutely no difference to stats or how you race, I highly recommend staying away from that option until you have enough to really splash out. Remember, things add up, so even if you buy some of the lower level stuff that's cheaper, eventually the expenses will stack up if you do this for quite a few horses, and will leave a big hole in your pockets. Just race in the basic tack for now. Number 4. Don't use the hired jockeys. I know, I know, hiring jockeys to do races to train the horses is very alluring since you don't have to do anything, and you can either skip or watch your beautiful horse come blazing down the track. However, hiring a jockey will take a big portion out of your winning money, and if you have some of the harder tracks unlocked, like Queen Elizabeth track, I have just now realised that I've been calling the Queen Victoria track the Queen Elizabeth track for some reason, I say it a couple times, I am so sorry. <laughs> you will find that sometimes, despite the odds, you will place atrociously, and because the jockeys get more expensive the harder the race, that can be a really big blow to your gold. Instead, run the horses yourself. That way you will get better at racing and you will get the full prize money. Plus, if you do place badly, it won't damage your gold as much since you only had to pay for the entrance fee. Save hiring jockeys for when your gold has really stacked up. Number 5. Do the quests. 
By doing the quests, you will unlock better graded horses and more difficult tracks that have a much bigger pot of prize money. Not only that, but you do get some gold for levelling up. And you get a rival bonus every time you race him. And the last race you do will give you 500k bonus. Now, if you're really smart, what you can do is when you get to this final rival race, just make sure you're in front of your rival, but not actually win. You will get the rival bonus whether you win or not. So theoretically, you could keep farming half a million by redoing the race and beating him but not winning. This is because to pass the quest, you have to come first in the entire race. However, I am aware that as you level up, there are more expenses. Upgrade this, buy that. But as long as you keep doing the other tips like racing yourself and betting, then you will still make a profit since the races now offer much more gold as prize money. Number six, make sure a horse makes profit. When you buy or breed a horse, keep in mind how much that horse cost. How much was the breeding bill? Did you get a caretaker? How much did you spend on training, etc. Then compare the total winnings shown on their stall. You can choose to include offspring winnings if you want to. Then, once you have either broken even, as in made back the money the horse needed, or made a profit, given you more than you spent, then you can sell the horse. Try and avoid buying or breeding horses and immediately selling them, since you will rack up a loss pretty quickly, so even if the foal is the wrong level or coat, at least try and get it to break even. Number 7. Don't quick buy items. Never, ever, ever, ever quick buy items, especially the gold ones. They have an outrageous price and will really leave a dent in your wallet. Even the bronze or silver items. See, if you don't have one of something, you will probably need it again in training or caring, so quick buying an item will really stack up. Instead, frequently check the market for items while you play. Usually, if I have below 10 of an item, I will purchase some just in case. If the market doesn't have what you need in that moment, then go ahead and race somewhere that gives that item level. I.e. if you need a bronze item, go to Three Oaks. Silver item, Sewell Meadows, and so on. It might take you a few tries to get the item, but you will also be getting money every time you do and other items. So it makes far more sense from a profit perspective to race for the items you're missing. Tiny tip, don't bother paying to speed up your breeding. Patience is a virtue, so just go and race or do something else while you wait. Number eight. This is one of the hardest things for many players to hear, but it is the truth, so you can choose to ignore it or not, but this is the biggest way you can continue to make your millions. Don't breed. I can see you typing in the comments that breeding is the only thing you really enjoy, or that I have a whole video of me breeding and immediately selling them. But listen, I optimized my money beforehand, and now I have over 130 million to spend on whatever I want. First off, don't try and breed a line of horses under grade 9. Why? Because as you level up, the tracks get harder, and the horses have to be better grades to actually win the races. So, even if you get the most beautiful line of black horses that are grade 7, they can't compete in races further than Sakura Valley because of the minimum level entry requirements. You'll find that even though this is a horse of your dreams, you can't race with it anymore, so it will either end up sitting in your stable or eventually be sold. Secondly, the coats are partially randomised, especially if you're breeding with a generated horse. That means if you want a pretty coat, or even have a specific coat in mind, you will spend so much money breeding horses that you are immediately selling at a big loss. I tend to find that people who are breeding for coats will pick the horse that looks best, but might not have the preferred position or decent stats. That will lead to many attempts at coats that leave you with horses you can't use on the track, making the sixth tip, making sure horses make a profit, very difficult. Instead, 
try speeding through the story to unlock grade 9 and 10 horses. Then, if you've been doing all the other tips, you will find that you have a nice chunk of money that you can now spend on a custom creation horse. Now, a max level grade 10 custom creation horse will cost 23 million, but trust me, making this money back is very easy. You can make it your dream horse and then use it to breed a line of champions that can defeat anyone in any race. At that point, you will be able to make tons of money from doing top races, betting on yourself and having horses that are almost guaranteed to win. Then you can go back and splurge on anything you want to, customization, jockeys, breeding and more custom horses. Actually, at this point, the more breeding and buying you do, the better. This is because the races at Queen Elizabeth can give you an insane amount of money, but are incredibly hard. To win, you have to have a max grade 10 horse that has a track type preference and length preference that matches the race you're running. So, the more horses you have, the more variation you have in your stable, so you can choose a horse best suited for that race. And that, paired with betting on yourself, will lead you to win and earn a ton of money. So, in short, don't take shortcuts, race a lot and save your spending for when you're rank 20. If you have any questions or tips for either mobile users or desktop, leave them down below. I will be doing more breeding in the future, so stay tuned for that. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay positive and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye